Hey, 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 guys, this is Hawkeye, and I am back with another episode of Fishing Simulator 2 Ultimate Fish. Wait a minute. Hey, 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 guys, this is Hawkeye, and I am back with another look at Ultimate Fishing Simulator 2. Not sure how many uh, episodes I might be able to get out of this, but I think it's going to be a short series, at least until the full version comes out. I really, really like this game. It does have its problems. Don't get me wrong, but they've already started to fix some of them. And uh, one of the things I wanted to bring up front, guys, is that um, the developers for this are different from the original Ultimate Fishing Simulator. That was Bit Gollum. This is a different group of developers. Now, the people that publish it are the same. That's where I got confused. Sorry about that, guys. But that's why some things look similar and some things are completely different. But one of the things that I uh, really like about this game is it's got a lot of interesting aspects to it that I've not seen in the original. First of which is the ability to do quests. Now, I have played off screen a little bit last night from where I'm recording now. And I had actually completed three daily quests while I was doing it. I don't. Apparently, you don't even have to select them but they will give you what the rundown is for this particular thing. Now, they don't have anything for the weekly quest or monthly quest that I can see yet. And the daily quests are not going to be remade available for another 10 hours. However, when I was on there, it was something like catch 3.5 kilograms of one species, or catch uh, three, you know, five different species, something of that nature. It was pretty much like that. You automatically got it. And that actually ends up paying off really well because what that does is if you go in there and you accept your reward, you get cash. And with cash, you can buy gear, better gear. So that's one thing. Another thing, if you're noticing there's no sound right now in the game, that's because one of my, uh, view actually, he's also a YouTuber, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let me make sure I have his name right. Yes, his name was DT Gaming. I'm going to go ahead and put it up on the screen. DT Gaming. And he's he's got things on YouTube, but it looks like he's more of a streamer than he is a YouTuber. But if you get a chance, check out what he has, guys. He's an up-and-coming uh, gaming YouTuber, at least, if, or streamer. So check him out, guys. Help him out, what you can. Anyway, he... You know, he gave me some good hints. He also let me know that this screen, when you come in here, apparently the music is copyrighted. <laughs> and he got dinged on it. He got dinged on it from YouTube. So, you don't... Yeah, if you're going to be recording this, make sure that you have the sound turned off. Now, when you're in the game, it's not an issue. And when I did my first one, I uh, didn't have the music or... I wasn't in the main screen. So once we get out of here, I will show you, you know, I'll turn everything back on as it should be. But anyway, we're going to go back to the skills thing that's in the main menu. And as you gain levels, you gain skill points. This is something that they had similar in the original Ultimate Fishing Simulator. But what it is, is he, uh, it allows you to get buffs or perks to your fishing abilities. And you can put these in now you have to, some of them you can just buy right away this basically gives you fish in aquariums that's something else we're going to get into the discussion later uh, five percent faster the economist this makes sale of fish increased by five percent uh, when you reach new level you earn extra coins now this is usually it deals with skill points and the Dodger has more, I guess, more relationship to your abilities. But I think this is the one I always liked for the original one. Uh, well, obviously, you can increase your attractiveness to your lures and baits. And I think this is the one I really want to get. The Eagle Eye. They had something similar to that in the original Ultimate Fishing Simulator. It allows you to see the fish in the water briefly where they are located. 
so you you would get that by pressing the V key. I'm kind of glad they cut, brought that along because that was a big help for locating you know for locating fish. Right now, I basically have to throw the line in and hopefully I see them. So anyway, that's the skills, and I only got one point and I put it into this one here, and that was attractive competitor. That increases my lure effectiveness. Now, some of these you can't get until you unlock these previous ones. So it's kind of like a tree, so to speak. All right, we're going to go back to... Well, we're going to go... Okay, we're going to go back home here. Now, this is where things get kind of interesting, guys. Before we move into actual fishing here, I'm going to show you the residence. Now, right now I have nothing in my fishing net, so that's not highlighted. I am now to level 2. If we go to the re residence, okay, here we are at the residence. And when you get fish, you can do one of four things with your fish. You can either sell them, you can release them, you can make them into trophies, or you can keep them in an aquarium and raise them until you get them a little bit bigger and then you can sell them at a higher price now let me take a look at this this is much fancier than the one from the original ultimate fishing simulator but these are where the trophies are going to go I assume that this is going to be also maybe for the larger ones I don't know but I did put one in just so that you can see what I'm talking about there's a yellow perch it's 1.64 pounds. I mean, it's not a monster, but I just wanted you to get an idea how that works. But when you go to your net, you actually have a, well, when you go to your net, there's like a little rundown on where you can place things. I can't bring that up right now since I already moved the fish. But I did put some fish in an aquarium and here they are and you can manage these fish and that's where some of the other skill levels that we were talking about earlier come into play some of them affect their rate of growth some of them affect um, how much they sell for when you finally get them to a level that you can sell them but if you look down at the bottom right screen you have on the left mouse button you can manage the aquarium and here they are it looks like the and as you can see it gives you kind of some stats the sockeye salmon is very hungry and I need to feed him I don't know the only thing is you can't seem to feed them very easily individually it's like you have to feed them all at the same time so I'm gonna try to find him and feed him but the right mouse button allows you to give him worms you can see him drop in I'm just going to drop a whole bunch of them. This does not affect the worms that you fish with. These are just separate from that. I don't know if he's hungry because he's bigger or what the deal is, but I put it, put different ones of different sizes in here just so that... Okay, let's make sure that they all eat. I don't see the salmon anymore. Let's see here. Maybe he's over here. No, I don't see him anymore. Where'd he go? Well, we're going to keep feeding him a little bit. Make sure they're in good shape. That's one of the... F the only thing I have a problem with there is he's over in that left corner. Come on, guy. I need you to eat. Yeah, that's important because right now the way the game works, uh, they get hungry in real time, not game time. So they can die. <laughs> apparently they can die so you have to keep up with it if you do this until they make a change or something but let me go ahead and hit the left mouse button see if he's fed yep see he's all he's all good now and each day they get a little bit bigger and they earn a little bit more money and this is kind of what you see in the the net as well only options is you can I think you have one more option up here but I think that's to add to it. yeah it's to add to the aquarium but you can look at the fish you can take a 3d look at the fish here's my bluegill 
he just kind of spins around, flapping his tail. And then we have the, well, let's look at a different fish. I got a smallmouth bass. Now, see how little he is? He's like 0.54. They can get a lot of money. On ones like this, you can really get a lot of money from. But if they're that little, you can't. So keeping them for a while, if you have the time to increase them in size, can be very helpful. But anyway, at any time, you can add them to trophies. You can sell them, or you can release them. So if you get too many in here and there's too many of the same kind, like, you know, whatever. I think we have two pumpkin seeds in here. Three, no, two pumpkin seeds. Okay, we're fine. I was trying to get one representation and I kept the small mouse just because of the much money they bring. But I think I might release one of these pumpkin seeds. Prob probably the bigger of the two. Actually, I might just sell him. There we go. And it looks like we have two pickerels, grass pickerels. Might as well sell the, the biggest one of those. That's enough. Five is a little bit more manageable for now. And we've got a pumpkin seed, we got a bluegill, we got a sockeye. They can bring some money in. And the grass pickerel. All right. We are good to go here. And it makes a nice, I think it's a really, really imaginative addition to this game. Really imaginative addition to any fishing game, honestly. But anyway, that is the residence. So we have to exit the location. And at this point, we can now go back to fishing once we have a chance. Now there are things you can do for equipment and shopping and you can do that while you're at the lake as well. Uh, equipment, that's pretty much the equipment you're carrying. This is where you could kind of mix and match and move things, upgrade it, that kind of thing. And I did buy some new lures for my spinner, spin casting setup. I actually purchased a larger line too. That's important because some of these fish are f kind of big. This, uh, the first line that you get, now let me show you here, is this 0.78 kilograms, and actually I got more than I need here. Um, that's free. It comes automatically with the game. If you need more of it, you can, pur you can purchase it, and it doesn't cost you a thing. Uh, another thing that's free, if you come to set two, bread is free. Worms are not. Worms are expensive. And you can lose worms along the way. So if you're going to do some float fishing, make sure that you have enough bait, but also remember that the worms are expensive. And I have tried to fish with the bread, and so far I haven't been able to get anything to bite off of them. This may be only because of this particular play test, but I am determined to get something to bite off of them. But since this has got such flowing water, I mean, it is Snake River, uh, I think that might be part of the problem. Trying to find an area where the float rod isn't being drug along has been a problem. But I've been having a heck of a lot more luck with spin casting. And I've got three distinct lures right now that I've been using. I've got this UFA Twister, which is what you get automatically for free. Look, see, we've already run through our earthworms. We only have five left. You initially start with ten. They go quickly. That's why you might want to stick with the spin casting as much as possible. I also purchased this spoon, and it's it did pretty good. It's You will get more things like smallmouth bass, uh, perch, bluegill. It seems like the salmon and the trout spoon trout type species don't really go for it but they do however go for the uh, spinners there this one has been bringing in some big sockeye salmon that's what I really would tell you if you're going to be doing this play test I would focus on using the spinning the spinning gear in the beginning I'm not saying you don't have to try the other I would say why don't you wait until they make some improvements there's a f I, there's a few things with the float fishing that I still have issues with. Um, 
so anyway once we can we're gonna buy a few more lures another thing I would suggest guys is getting heavy line or the heavier line as soon as possible you have this line automatically on your float rod you need it on your spinning rod and I believe it costs about thirty dollars cash so as soon as you can purchase it as soon as you can earn enough money from the fish that you can purchase it put this on your spinning rod you're gonna do a lot better but we're gonna go into the shop here and eventually there's gonna be DLCs that we can purchase which is gonna be great but we get these rods free you can already see though that the rods are very expensive so I'm sure the reels are too I haven't really checked oh yeah we're getting into thousands of dollars here to get you know bigger and better reels but as we move along the fish sell for more so I've already got hundred and eighty five dollars and fifty two cents like I said the sockeye salmon sold for a lot plus gaining a level plus the quests and the quests alone I got almost a hundred dollars so definitely make sure you take you know pay attention to the quest I will show you how that is accessible in a minute once we get to the actual fishing location I haven't actually purchased any of these things yet haven't needed to leaders things like that if I do I will definitely show you this is a feeder I mean that's for when you're doing feeding fishing I'm it's not my forte I still have trouble even with fishing planet getting that down perfectly hooks aren't too bad but we will eventually need bigger hooks for different situations as we move along and then we get different hooks for live bait we got wide gap I think that's for your different types of soft lures then we've got our regular lures we got spoons they separate them out by spoons spinners soft lures and somebody told me that this one one of my viewers said this one actually does better than the initial one that you get for free the black the black red and this black gold is free also if you want to use that but someone told me I thought that the gold works really well and it's only five bucks so it's not a big deal not pricey but as far as others I haven't gotten to that point I've just gotten to this point and I wanted to make sure I shared all of this with you I'm hoping this is gonna help you guys but let me go ahead and get into the lake itself here and I think I can go ahead and turn on the sound here once we get in alright we're back at the lake I think we're in position 5 that's where we seem to be starting at every time but yeah I'm not seeing my quests which is not surprising because there aren't any available right now I wish they were so you could see them but you normally it's a little tab on the left of the screen if you hit F3 it'll pop out and you'll be able to see what quests are available and how far along you've gotten unfortunately it's not going to be there so probably in the, one of my next or views of this I will show you what I'm talking about man the graphics in this are amazing aren't they but anyway I've got this set up with the spinner and I'm going to show you just how well this works there is a trick to this guys there is a trick to this this one of my viewers mentioned that it seems like the fish keep getting off the hook yeah they do it's they're actually real good about that um, what you gotta make certain of the control button allows you to reel at full speed what I usually do is when a fish grabs it I hit my right mouse button to pull up I'm not really going to cast that but I hit my right mouse button to pull up and then I hit the control button to increase my reel speed that seems to hook them better honestly and you want to have the hit the control button anyway when you, re when you reel them in in order to get them to come in a lot faster and easier so 
just so you know, that can help you a lot. I haven't had one get off the hook doing it that way since. Alright, let me go ahead and redo this, but we're going to cast this. Another thing is, is it's very easy to overcast this and basically throw it to the bank. If that happens, there's a way to get around that, the control button yet again. If it does happen, it didn't that time. If you hit the control button and just reel in a little bit, it'll usually go back in the water. But we're going to go ahead and take a look under the water here. Now right now it's at 50% speed. Let me tell you right off the bat, that's too fast. You're not going to get a good presentation. For those little twisting lures, 10% works best. 10 to 12%, something like that. For the spinners and the spoons, however, 20%. Another thing is you want to have your drag, right now it's at 70%. Take it down to 30%. If you have it up now this is with the line I have. I need a 30% for the line I have. If you have the line you start with, 20% to start with. Otherwise the fish will break your line. They don't tell you that. <laughs> they don't tell you that at all. Found that out along the way. They did sort of give you a hint in regards to it in the uh, tutorial, but they weren't real clear about that. See right now my speed is at 50%. I need to take this down to 20. I don't know if you can see over the bottom right where it's spinning. That's the middle white, uh, middle mouse button. 20%, drag 30%. If uh, you're not sure about what to do with it, just watch what happens when you reel it in. If your lure doesn't go green, you need to either decrease or increase it. See it going green? I always keep my finger hovered over the control button so that if a fish grabs it, I can hit my right mouse button and the control button and snag it, son of a gun. Works every time. Well, that is if the fish if a fish is there and bites. But I haven't lost one since that time. I'm not seeing any fish here, honestly. Yeah, I didn't see any there. Let's see how we can reel that in real fast. But I'm not sure what the time of day is here right now. So I'm not sure where the fish are going to be located. Usually right here is a good spot, but there is a better spot. Let me go ahead and let me go ahead and get the map up by the old bridge. You can spawn over there. And you see that graffiti? right over there is a good spot now this is where it gets a little tricky with the spin casting not so much with this one but with that little twister lure you, like I said you have a tendency to overthrow it's very hard not to right here you might want to try the right mouse button and lob it in if you're using that twister lure for this it shouldn't be a problem but we're gonna see if we can't get something now if I overcast, I'll show you what how it works. Nope, right on the edge. Perfect. Okay, we're going to go ahead and look underwater here. And there's usually fish here all the time. So, and you can see them. Remember, hit the right mouse button and the control button at the same time. If a fish comes and gets it. Not looking like one's going to do it this time. All right, we're going to try it again. I'm going to cast it a little bit more over this direction. Oh, and I am sorry, I did forget to turn the sound back on. <laughs> I was like, "Dang, on, it's quiet." All right. There we go. Now we're in good shape. Let's take a look at the underwater view. There 
if we can't get them to bite on this, we'll try a different lure. Like I said, I'm not sure what the time is here. That damn duck. He is always hanging out. Alright, let's go ahead and change the lure first here. Let's put the one you start with. That way we have a little bit more of a... to work with here. Now, you'll definitely get to see me overcast on this. Okay. See? Bait got hooked on the ground. Alright. Hit the control button. If it doesn't get in there, now it says slow lift and drop. That means it's in the water. And we need to take the speed down to about 10% or 12%. For this one, that speed works better. I don't know why there's such a difference, but... Well, let's see if we can get one of these guys to bite here. Had no problem at all yesterday, but... I was going to say, usually they don't hesitate to do this. But you're not going to get some of them. There we go. And I got him. He's not real big, so it doesn't take much to get him in. But, actually he's not too bad. He's a pound. And you can change the camera view so that you can see the girl holding the fish. Nice little yellow perch. And we're going to keep him because he's money. He is money and we need money. <laughs> Without a doubt we need money. Need money? Honey. Alright, we're going to try this again. See how easily you get it hooked on the ground. Okay, it's still hooked. Now it's in the water. If you look over there, if it says slow lift and drop, you know it's in the water. I like the underwater view because I like to see the fish attack. It's You don't have to do that, honestly. You can do it on, on the surface just like in realistic, and that is what the setting for realistic, I believe, allows you to do. But you better be ready. They bite a lot here. You might get a big one. One thing I do too sometimes is as I'm reeling along I might hit the control button to kind of pulse it along. It seems to do even better doing that. Now right here guys, since it's so close, you might want to use the left mouse button and lob it over. It seems to work a lot better with this particular lure, getting it where you want it to be. See, you normally use the lobbing ability for flow fishing, but if you use it for this here, because it's not very far across. Let me try that again. Come on, fish. Quit playing around with me here. 
There we go. We got him. I'll keep him. He's just a little fella. do this pulse thing that I was talking about. If it seems like it's going to the bottom too quickly, that tends to help that problem. And I don't think any fish are close by, so I don't think they're going to get it this time. Let's try casting a little more over this way. I think I might have hit the duck. <laughs> Come on, we want to get a little bit of a different thing here. There we go. And there you go. A little grass pickerel. Well, let me go to keep. Now this is what I wanted to show you guys. We go over to the profile fishing net and you open up your fishing net and this is where you have your options. And you can sell these at any time. And as you notice the yellow perch here, he, he brings in a little bit of a penny there. But we'll go ahead and sell him. And then you got other options you got is add to aquarium, add to trophies. That's the other option. We already have something to trophies for this one. And if you get a bigger one, it'll be highlighted. Right now, he's not bigger than the trophy I have in there. So once I get a, a personal best, I can click that if I so desire. And in here, as you can see, you can take a look at the fish. There's the grass pickerel. Pretty little fish. Anyway, there you go. That's a kind of a quick look at some of the cool features with this thing. I really, really like some of these features. And I think I'm going to be fishing this a lot. Now, in subsequent episodes, we're going to be going to different spots that are on this lake. Uh, this is one of the first ones that I really like. The other one out over there seems to be much better for the spin casting. Uh, not spin casting. The spinners. Much better with the spinners. Uh, there is some good spots over here as well, and I'll show you some little idiosyncrasies about that because you might get confused about some of that, and I did at first, but this game has some, you know, like I said, some interesting <laughs> idiosyncrasies. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please be sure to share, comment, like, and subscribe. And I will be back for another look at this. I don't know how many episodes we're going to get out of this, but... There's only two lakes. We can only do so much until the full version comes out. But I'm enjoying it. I really am. I had a lot of fun with this so far. Um, anyway, as I always say, guys, aim straight, cast far, and have fun. I will see you later. Bye-bye.